You know, in the last few weeks, as I've talked with people in the party and people in the media, and of course my friends, the first question is the same. When do you talk about it? Why do you want to get back into politics? Why not stay out of that messy business and avoid the scrutiny that comes with putting yourself out there? Step back, enjoy a nice, comfortable life. It's pretty simple. You see, deep down inside, it's almost like I don't have a choice. The drive and desire to serve the public, it's a big part of who I am. I feel an obligation to participate in the conversation, in the decision-making processes that affect us all and that can affect real change. And comfort in my own life is not enough when I know that others in my community are struggling. I have a hard time keeping quiet on matters of social justice, of inclusion, and of equality. I am deeply compelled to speak up on behalf of others who deserve to have their ideas and issues heard, but whose voices might otherwise be lost. Now, many of you have heard this story. Bear with me. I do come from a political family. My dad ran for the Tories in a valley seat shortly after the war in 1949. I have to say that it was an election that the Tories were shut out of the legislature in Nova Scotia. My brother was Tory MP Pat Nallen's campaign manager in the 60s. So I had an early and a fairly deep understanding of politics, based on the wrong party, some would say. <laughs> and luckily, by the time it came to vote, I recognized my principles and voted for the NDP. I've always had a deep respect for public service. It wasn't until 1990, however, that I even considered running for office. When I ran for the NDP in Halifax Atlantic, I had no experience in public office. I had no experience public speaking. In fact, I wasn't even known in the riding. But I took on that challenge because I felt a responsibility. I felt compelled to speak out about the injustices people were facing as a result of decisions that government were making, governments were making. And I wanted to get elected so that I could work hard to solve problems and get results. And my friends, I feel that same obligation today. I believe that most people get into public service for the right reasons. When I look at the scene in federal politics today, I don't like what I see. I don't believe in the divide and conquer strategy so warmly embraced by the Harper Conservatives. And I don't believe in the Liberals' approach. It swings back and forth between lazily endorsing the Harper government and then vigorously opposing just for the sake of opposition. While Jack Layton's team of New Democrats are focused on the kind of opposition that we need, working to make real change for Canadian families all the time, not just when it's convenient. We heard Jack talk tonight about the things that they've been doing and what we will do with more New Democrats elected to Parliament. I believe in listening to the people I'm committed to serving and working hard to get things done in our community. I believe in making sure that fairness, respect, and cooperation are woven into the fabric of our society. So I can't just sit on the sidelines watching. 
And by stepping up, by trying to change what I do not like, I'm acknowledging my responsibility and I'm acting on it. And contrary to what critics and cynics will say, a political representative who really cares can make a difference in the lives of people. I got a surprising reminder of this not so long ago. Paul and I were doing some work with a group of paramedics. One of them spoke up and said, thank you to me. I had to, I had to ask him, what, what, are you, what are you thanking me for? Now it turns out that he had been in the gallery of the legislature one night in the fall of 1999. Our caucus was taking a stand against the government bill, stripping paramedics of their right to strike, the right to uh, collect the bargaining. The deadline for the strike was approaching, and the galleries were packed with paramedics. Thanks to their determination and our opposition, we were able to get the government to compromise on its position enough to prevent a work stoppage. All these years later, that paramedic was thanking me for standing up and speaking out on behalf of him and his colleagues. And he told me he still has a copy of the speech I delivered that night at, at home uh, in a file. I asked him, of course, if he has insomnia or a problem. The point is that this is the real power that elected officials have, the power to affect change and make a difference in people's lives. And that is why the NDP's values and principles are so critical at a time like this. We are the party that reaches out to ordinary Canadians and works to make their lives better in real and meaningful ways. Someone said to me the other day that in order for the federal NDP to form government, he figured, there was going to have to be some sort of cataclysmic event. I almost jumped at the mic, but I, I, held, I held back. Because we know that we can do amazing things when we harness the power of hard work, of great people, a powerful vision, and a staunch refusal to listen to those who say that it can't be done. We believe it, we know it, we've seen it. We elected an NDP government in Nova Scotia in 2009. Jack, I think that federal politics just needs to catch up to us Nova Scotians in our progressive political ways. <laughs> the federal NDP has been energized and strengthened by the leadership of Jack Layton and the great team that he's put together. The hard work and the dedication of so many people is paying off and the party's message is beginning to resonate with Canadians. I believe that the people of Dartmouth Pearl Harbor are eager to hear what we have to say and eager to again experience the kind of hard-working, passionate NDP representation that they had with Lendi Wendy Lill. When I look around Dartmouth Pearl Harbor, I see a community with a strong character and great potential. A community that wants to work together to build on those strengths and reach that potential without leaving the most vulnerable among us out in the cold. People who know the value of hard work. People who want and deserve a sense of safety and security 
for themselves, for their loved ones, community. People who want and deserve to be represented by someone who takes the responsibility of representation very seriously. I am ready to listen to the people of this riding, to find out what their concerns are and what they think we should do about them. And I am ready to take those concerns to Ottawa. Make sure that they are here, heard loud and clear and work to make life better and more affordable for the people of Dartmouth Cole Harbour. I can't do it all alone. This isn't just my challenge. Now don't get me wrong, I do enjoy a challenge. I faced a few tough challenges in the past. When I first ran for the House of Assembly in John Buchanan's old seat, the pundits were divided over whether the Liberals or the Tories were going to win. We won, thanks to hard work, thanks to the help of new Democrats from across Nova Scotia and the support of the voters of Halifax Atlantic. When I became leader in 1996, hey John, we had two seats. We had two seats in the legislature. Mind you, one of them was John. <laughs> 18 months later, we had four seats. In two years, we were official opposition. So my point is, I'm ready for whatever comes my way. You see, in many ways, this is your challenge too. It's our challenge. It's our collective responsibility. My past experience, my present opportunity, my vision of this community and of this country have called me to action. But you know what? More people need to step up. More people must engage in the conversations that we need to have. More people must know and understand that federal politics matters. That it's not just some far removed battle of ideologies, that it has real impact in the day to day lives of families in this community. The, the people of Dartmouth Coal Harbor need to hear that their issues, their health and safety, and their voices matter. My friends, they need to know that a hardworking MP who embodies the values of the New Democrats will make a real difference for them in their community and in Ottawa. It's a big challenge, and we can do it if we do it together. Because democracy and political engagement are important. It's not a perfect system by any stretch of the imagination, but it's important. And it's far too important to leave in the hands of a privileged few. So my friends, we need to work hard. We need to work to engage others, especially the nearly 40% of people in this riding who do not vote. We all need to understand why we're doing it and why it matters. Tonight, I'll sum up with the words of a man who has inspired so much in our country, so much in our party, Tommy Douglas. He said, courage, my friends, it is not too late to build a better world. My friends, I say to you, indeed, it's not too late. We're just getting started. Thank you very much. Let's go get him.